Now we're going to take a look at the importance of using the correct note head numbers in Sibelius to ensure that you get the right sound from your playback. Uh, to demonstrate this, we're just going to focus on the tenor line manual instruments, or tenor is manual light, actually, is what we're using in the score. Uh, but looking at the key map here, uh, if we scroll down to this area right down in here, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the mapping in Virtual Drumline, uh, you're familiar with this octave in that uh, there's four different sounds that are assigned to each one of these keys. Uh, depending on where you have the mod wheel placed, you're going to get either a shot sound, a dreadlock sound, the sound of rods, or uh, the sound of a rim clip. And uh, so shot would be with the mod wheel all the way down, the dreadlock sound would come out when uh, the mod wheel is set between 32 and 63. The rods would sound when the mod wheel is between 64 and 95. And the rim, you could just put the mod wheel all the way up to 127 and you're going to get that sound. Um, we used to have to actually manually control the mod wheel uh, to get all those sounds, but now instead we're going to do it differently in Sibelius 5.1. Mainly so that we can mix and match these sounds within the same phrase if you need to. So what that's going to require you to do is actually change to the correct note head once you've entered it. This is particularly uh, affecting the tenor line instruments and the bass line instruments. And you'll see that if you reference the dictionary chart in the README that came with the template. <clears throat> you'll see that. Uh, the tenor line instrument, uh, well, let's look at the snare line instrument. We talked about how the dictionary text can affect uh, how the sound comes out. For example, in the snare line, you can set it to center, halfway, or edge, and that will move the mod wheel automatically for you. Um, and that's all programmed into the dictionary as text. Well, the, uh, the shots and dreads and rods and rims, those types of uh, layouts, those aren't as easily accessed with text and uh, especially if you're going to mix and match parts you may not want to write that much text into your score that wouldn't really make a lot of sense um, for example you might want one hand using one hand playing on the rims and the other hands playing uh, with uh, bundle rods or, or one hands playing with dreadlocks or something like that so uh, rather than actually using dictionary text, we are going to assign those sounds to be played back properly uh, dependent on the correct note heads in the score. So um, which note heads you use will be dependent on the note heads that have been set up in the mapping of the template. So this is, again, in the readme of the uh, template, the, the readme that came with the template. And the shots, dreads, rods, and rims, as you know from the mapping, the, the key map, uh, uh, those are all assigned to the same octave in virtual drumline. So if we wanted it to play back shots, the note heads need to be assigned to note head 29 for the left hand, or note head 51 for the right hand. And this gives you the proper staff placement from low to high as well. Uh, for the dreads, we would set them to note head 14 for the left hand, or note head 58 for the right hand. For rods would be note head 6 or 62. Rims would be note head 1 or 40. And that may sound like a lot of math up front here, but once you get uh, the sense of which note heads are assigned to which sounds, uh, they are fairly universal from instrument to instrument when applicable. So if you were writing for snare drums, uh, note heads 1 and 40 also correlate to the rim. Same with bass drums. Um, so th that will become second nature the more you start using it. And by default, uh, when you enter stuff into the score, <clears throat> uh, whatever the mod wheel down uh, setting is, that's the, the default n uh, notation you're going to see. So if I just type in a, a tenor part here, using that octave of sound. So I'll just go from high to low. I 
I just punched that in on the MIDI keyboard. And you'll see if I click on that note, if you look down here in the notes uh, properties palette, that note that I've just selected there is assigned to note head 51, which also corresponds to the right hand hit of the shots that we see here in the mapping diagrams. If I go to the second note, that was a left hand entry. You'll notice here that that's set to note head 29, which again is set to note head 29. It's a left hand shot in the mapping diagram. So those were automatically entered, but let's say I didn't want those to be rim shots. I wanted those to be rim clicks instead. I'm just actually going to take those two bars. I'm going to hit R to repeat them into the next two bars. And instead, I'm going to change the note heads so that uh, for rims, the left hand is going to be note head 1, right hand is going to be note head 40. So going back here to the score, I'm going to select everything that's a right hand. I'm going to command click just the right hand notes. If you're in Windows, that'd be control click, and that will select non contiguous notes. And over here, we're just going to set those to note head 40. And you'll see that the note head changed. Now I'm going to select just the left hand notes. Again, command clicking on Mac or control clicking on Windows and I'm going to change those to note head number one. Now rather than going through this menu and searching, that can be a little slow and cumbersome, there's a keyboard shortcut in Sibelius for changing note heads. It's real quick and easy. On Mac here it's Option, Shift, and then the note head number. On Windows it'd be uh, Alt, Shift, and then the note head number. So since I'm going to note head one, I'm just going to hit Option, Shift, one, and then boom, they've all changed. So now when I play that bar back, we've got rim clicks. Uh, if I want to mix and match a little, like say I want some shots and some clicks, let me just take those shots. I'm going to option click those over here so that they paste right in and now you'll hear that they actually change. Okay, and if you're uh, actually watching the mod wheel down here, you'll see that that actually changes with the note heads. Okay, so if we wanted to do the same thing with, uh, let's say, dreadlocks. Again, let's reference what the correct note heads are going to be. Right hands are 58, left hands are 14. So let's select all the right hands by command clicking. Those should be set to note head 58, so I'm going to hit Option Shift and then real quickly type in 58. And then we'll select all the left hands. And remind ourselves those are note head 14. So option shift 1 4. And now, and you'll see the mod wheel change down here. So that's basically how you would go about uh, typing in the correct note heads or changing the note heads once you've entered them so that the correct sounds are played back. And you could type in the word dreads here if uh, you know you wanted to give your players the cue that that's what they're supposed to be playing with and uh, that won't really have any bearing whether that's there or not on how well it plays back. It's the same thing. Uh, so this can be most valuable if you are planning on mixing and matching parts and I've just punched in real quickly a, a part here that, that can kind of demonstrate this. We'll just play that back. So you'll see that uh, this is a part where the player is supposed to have a dread in the right hand and then the left hand is using a regular stick. They have a shot here which is mapped to the same octave as the dreads and it still was, cha was changed properly. These are rim sounds. Um, when it's playing back it'll actually play those as rim sounds. There's uh, dread to regular drum, dreads, regular drum, regular drum. It's a shot and dreads. So they're all kind of interspersed in there and just because the notes heads are, uh, are correctly assigned we're getting the correct sounds. And to take it even a step further we could even assign this regular drum part instead of playing it with regular sticks let's assign it to puffies 
and uh, I'll drag that down so it correlates to the left hand part. And now when we play it back, because puffies are set up in the dictionary, as you'll see in the dictionary chart for tenorline instrument, when I type in the word puffies, it's going to do a sound ID, sound ID change so that puffies are played back. Now you'll see that, or now you'll hear that the puffy sounds come out. So just a quick example of how uh, interspersing those sounds and assigning the correct note heads can give you a lot of flexibility to have Sibelius automatically locate the correct sounds for you.